Hello everyone, these are my top 16 favorite movies of 2016. Before I get into the list, I'm just going to mention some movies that I liked. Deadpool. I like Deadpool. I thought some of the jokes might have uh, been a little bit too much, but overall I enjoyed Deadpool. Money Monster. This movie was fantastic. I really liked Money Monster a lot. The problem is that um, I kind of forgot a little bit about Money Monster after I saw it. Even though I loved it when I first saw it. But it just came out with, with a lot of other movies and I kind of forgot about it. But I definitely liked it a lot. It was a very entertaining movie. I highly recommend Money Monster. Independence Day Resurgence. I'm a huge fan of the first Independence Day. I grew up with that movie. And Resurgence was not that good. It wasn't a good Independence Day sequel. It wasn't that good of a movie, but it was fun. I did not leave the theater angry. Uh, and I, I'll talk more about that later on. But, but um, I, you know, the CGI was terrible, but I just really like seeing the old cast. The new cast was horrible. Uh, every time I saw the new cast, I wanted them all dead. I wanted the aliens to just kill them all. But uh, the ending, I liked the ending a lot. I actually did like the ending a lot. And, uh, you know, even though it was a huge disappointment, I still enjoyed it. Another movie I liked was The BFG. I thought that one was very good. Steven Spielberg always does a great job. And uh, Warcraft, I like Warcraft. And also, My Big Fat Greek Wedding 2, yes. Uh, I really do like the first one. I grew up with that movie. And I think the second one was uh, a smaller movie, but it was still very fun. Alright, now on to the list. Coming in at number 16, Keanu. Really liked it a lot. Very fun movie. I could probably rewatch it a bunch of times and not get bored. It was very entertaining. Very fun movie. Number 15. Ghostbusters. Yes. I know that there was a lot of controversy with this movie. There was there was issues. There were people talking horribly about the movie. When I first heard that they were, you know, rebooting Ghostbusters, I actually was a little bit excited. A little bit. Like I, I said, okay, I want to see what this movie ends up being. And when they said that Paul Feig was going to direct, I, I really liked it. I loved Spy. I enjoyed The Heat. Never saw Bridesmaids. And it's been a long time since I've seen some of his earlier work. But I think that he's a he's a solid director and a good choice for Ghostbusters. When the trailer came out for this movie, I was just so disappointed. The trailer looked horrible. All the trailers looked horrible. The jokes were not funny. And it just the the marketing was horrible. The posters were terrible. I really did not like what they were doing with it. I thought this movie was going to be horrible. I was counting on it being one of the worst movies I've ever seen. And it seems as if everything was pointing towards me hating this movie. Like it just seemed like everything, everything was set up for me to hate it. Including a dream that I had um, a couple months before the movie came out. I had a dream where I was sitting in the theater watching Ghostbusters. And there was some lady in the theater sitting next to me. And she was extremely annoying. And she would not stop talking. And she was on her phone. And uh, I remember in my dream I got so angry that I got up and I walked out of the, of the theater. It was a strange dream, okay? But... Uh, that dream stuck with me and I, I said to myself, what if that ends up happening when I go and see the movie? What if I get stuck with someone that's annoying? And sure enough, uh, yes, um, there was this lady sitting on my row, but at the end, and it was the weirdest thing. When I say that everything was pointing towards me hating this movie, I mean it. Like this lady... Okay, this lady was on her phone uh, texting. She wasn't talking, but she was on her phone texting for the entire movie. I've never seen this before in my life. 
I've never seen someone on their phone from the beginning, from the moment that the, the logos came up on screen. She put her phone away during the trailers, and then when the logos came out, she took her phone out. And her phone stayed out, glued to her face, uh, basically for the entire movie. And she would only look up when something kind of funny would happen. And she would look up and she wouldn't laugh. She would say, I'm dead. She would say that. So I had a really horrible experience because just the glare and you know she's she's out of reach i can't say anything the theater was crowded i saw it opening weekend i'm not going to yell and i'm not going to get up you know i'm sitting in the middle i'm not going to get up and push past a bunch of people in this in this uh really old theater that the seats are kind of close up together and the and the rows are very narrow so i'm not about to get up and just to complain and they're going to tell me sorry we can't do anything about it everybody texts now so I just let it go and continued to watch the movie. I did the best I could to block it out. And I was sure that I was going to hate this movie. But I actually liked it a lot. Yes, it had problems. Some of the jokes were corny. Some of the things that happened were very inconsistent. Some of the CGI was not that great. But there was there's a fantastic movie in there. I can tell somewhere along the lines that Sony, someone butchered it up. But I actually liked this movie a lot. And what I said about Independence Day, about it uh, not making me angry, or whatever I said about Independence Day, basically it's the same thing with this movie. I have been disappointed with a lot of uh, movies recently. A lot of these sequel, reboots, remakes, uh, and adaptations that have come out recently. I've been so disappointed with some of them. Movies like Spectre, Jurassic World, Vacation. A Good Day to Die Hard, Terminator Genesis. These are movies that I saw and I hated. And they were movies that were either a sequel or a, a reboot or remake to a movie that I loved. And, you know, then comes these movies and they suck. I hated all of them. I really did. And I was sure that Ghostbusters was going to be one of them, but it wasn't. I actually liked it. I, I, I left the theater feeling happy, regardless of whatever that lady was doing, texting for the entire movie. But I, I did enjoy the movie. So I think that people should maybe give it a chance. And another thing about uh, Ghostbusters, the villain was actually very interesting. I actually liked the villain a lot. I really did. I thought that there was a, a creepiness to him. And and his motivations, it all was very cool. It, it really was cool. Also, Chris Hemsworth was terrific in this movie. This dude has comedic timing, perfect comedic timing. Thought he, he was just hilarious. The, every time he said something, just the whole theater started laughing. Except for the girl on her phone, of course. She looked up and said, I'm dead. Coming in at number 14, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. And this movie was probably one of my most anticipated movies of 2016. Uh, when I first saw the trailer, I and I first heard about the movie, I was so excited. And I was sure that this movie was probably going to be like in my top three. Well, it isn't because um, it was a little bit disappointing, I'm not going to lie. I loved the movie. I really did. I loved it. But it was disappointing in what I thought it was going to be because um, I thought that it was going to be what the name implies. I thought it was going to be them, this this group, this great group of people that meet up. And I thought it was going to be them going around New York City, capturing these beasts that have um, gotten loose and half the movie is that basically if you've seen it you know half the movie's that and then another half comes in out of nowhere where it's basically some strange abuse 
uh, a character is getting abused by his uh, this lady. I don't, I don't, I don't even remember that. It was just, it was so weak, and it was the whole like the anti witch lady, and then there was this senator or or the senator's son. I don't even remember, but someone was giving a speech, and then they got attacked. If you've seen the movie, you know. But it was just so that like that part of the movie I thought was so. Uh, not done well it was so underdeveloped and it wasn't entertaining i kept on wishing for it to switch back to to the main character and and, and his group because i loved that group and i loved what they were doing there was some great humor there there were some great lines there i think that if the movie was that all the way through and it was very magical and it was just you know something like that where there was a lot of these physical comedy scenes and a lot of these gags that were that were old school and they were very funny and they worked and i, I wish that the whole movie was that it you know didn't need to escalate to what it ended up being which was this huge cgi battle at the end of the movie where you know a laser or something gets shot up it's just the typical generic stuff it didn't need to be that this movie could have been something so simple and and magical about these people going around and and finding these beasts and they're, they're in the harry potter universe and and i loved that part of the movie i loved it but the other stuff, I think they should have left that for um, the next movie. Another thing that bothered me greatly, and I don't want to spoil this for anybody watching that hasn't seen the movie. There is an actor in the movie who wasn't announced to be in the movie until I think like a week before the movie came out. And I was excited to see this guy. Love the actor. If you've seen the movie, you know who it is. But I was so excited to see this. And I was thinking, you know, how are they going to show you know who this character is and how they're going to introduce this guy and when they finally do that i i've never done this before but i seriously like said what the hell when they when they showed this guy it was like something straight out of scooby-doo where they take the mask off of the bad guy and it's someone else it's like it was that bad i was that was so sloppy the way that they handled that i thought that was so bad at the end there, I thought it really wasn't good, but I still enjoyed the movie a lot, and I'm, I'm excited for the next one. I hope that they, the next one, they can fix some of the issues that this movie had. Coming in at number 13, The Jungle Book. Fantastic movie. Great special effects. Yeah, I really couldn't tell that the whole movie was filmed basically on a green screen with one actor. Coming in at number 12. Captain America Civil War. So Captain America Civil War, I think it, it was a very good movie. I definitely enjoyed it a lot. Spider-Man was fantastic. I'm so excited for the Spider-Man movie. Spider-Man Homecoming, so excited for that. I think everybody did a great job, everybody. But um, my biggest problem with this movie, and it is something that I've been noticing with most marvel movies i say most because not every single one but the majority of marvel films have had this issue and i always thought that it was the cinematography i always thought that you know maybe it's just their cinematography is not that good or they're they're going for a really bland kind of a look but then watching this movie i realized what it was it wasn't the cinematography so much it might be a little bit but not so much the main issue with this movie and a lot of the other marvel movies their production designs are weak they have very weak sets in the avengers they're supposed to be in this magnificent helicarrier and it's all supposed to be very high tech but the designs were terrible. It looks like they filmed it in a high school computer lab. It just looked cheap and it didn't have any kind of atmosphere. That's what a lot of these Marvel movies lack, atmosphere. And and a lot of, um, not just the Avengers, but the other ones too, have sets that just don't look anything special. They just It's like they, they just didn't put any thought to them. They're very generic looking. And in Civil War, there was a lot of that. A lot of generic looking sets that looked like they just filmed it in some random warehouse. Like that whole ending fight between Captain America and Iron Man. While I loved it, I enjoyed it a lot. I thought it was the most boring looking fight I've seen in a while. It was, they were in a concrete room. You know, like, really in a concrete room, give us something nice to look at. The airport one was cool, 
I kind of wish that they would have um, done that fight in a city, maybe. But, you know, if only the Avengers and, and the Avengers Age of Ultron didn't waste it on, you know, stupid battles with robots and aliens that no one, well, I, at least I don't really care about. I never felt anything during the Avengers. I'm not a big fan of either Avengers movies. I think those are... On the, in my opinion, they are on the lower end of the Marvel scale, uh, especially the second one. But uh, you know, they just I thought that they're very cheap with the the whole battles. It's just they're fighting a bunch of CGI creatures in both, and you don't really feel anything. But in Civil War, I actually felt something when I saw these guys go at it together. I I really did feel something, and seeing them all suited up and fighting each other it was fantastic. I loved it. It's just that that whole their sets need working on. They they have very generic sets. Coming in at number eleven, Doctor Strange. Uh, I loved Doctor Strange. Don't have much to say about it. The, the, I thought it was a great movie, a great origin story. Uh, the visuals are fantastic. Directing was good. Movie looked beautiful on IMAX. It really did. I had some very nice shots and an IMAX some very nice real IMAX shots with the where the IMAX screen was used to the full extent and uh, just a very fun movie very enjoyable coming in at number 10 13 hours Michael Bay one of my favorite directors this movie fantastic such a great movie very sad this movie shows what these soldiers went through and and just how long they fought for it's it really it's it's crazy and i thought the the action in the movie was fantastic the special effects were terrific Every, you know typical michael bay movie stuff i know he gets a lot of hate i like michael bay i like that that big screen experience that he does in all his movies i don't care i love transformers even though i wasn't a big fan of the last one or the second one i still enjoy them I, even as mindless entertainment but 13 hours was definitely more than just mindless entertainment i think it might be one of my favorite michael bay movies right next to the rock and transformers dark of the moon i, I really love dark of the moon but it definitely was a great movie very well made very action-packed and and very emotional terrific very terrific the sound was something else in that movie the sound in, in 13 hours was really well done number nine deep water horizon what a great movie to see in imax what an intense movie what a freaking ride deep water horizon was peter berg did a great job mark Wahlberg did a great job kurt russell everybody everybody did a great job the story was fantastic and it really is crazy to see what what really happened on uh, on the, the the deep water horizon very crazy what they did a lot of those mistakes that they made and the the higher ups forced people to continue working and but but as a movie it was it was really good i thought that just non-stop intense the special effects were something else really loved it really really loved it number eight magnificent seven this movie was terrific seriously i thought i thought it was a great western i thought it was a great action movie uh, i enjoyed it from beginning to end i thought it was so much fun denzel washington is terrific to see antoine fuqua was a great director and I, I really enjoy a lot of his movies. Um, I love The Replacement Killers. I really love that movie. And every time I see an Antoine Fuqua movie, I'm like, is is this going to be better than Replacement Killers? And I honestly think this one is because I, Magnificent Seven really did blow me away when it ended. I was like, wow, that was something that was worth seeing in IMAX that was really well shot no shaky cam thought this movie was really nice it was very good looking I enjoyed seeing it in IMAX um, well done action western I liked it a lot number seven Zootopia what can I say about Zootopia it's a Disney movie Disney knows what they're doing I thought it was terrific the animation is some of the most beautiful I have seen and it's what I love about Disney is that 
their movies, the, the, especially you know their animated movies, they're not really kids' movies. You know, they're just they're they're movies for all ages, and Zootopia especially. Like this movie really deals with some adult themes, and the action in the movie was actually very, <laughs> very good. Believe it or not, I loved that that whole train sequence, but. I thought Zootopia was fantastic. I really loved it a lot. Coming in at number six, Finding Dory. Finding Dory was fantastic. It was a sequel I've been waiting for since I first saw Finding Nemo. I don't have anything bad to say about Finding Dory. I really don't. I think it was a beautiful movie. Sad in some parts, hilarious in others. But I really loved it. Really loved Finding Dory. Coming in at number five. The Girl on the Train. This movie feels like it was made for me. It's a movie filmed in Westchester. That actually takes place in Westchester. Uh, there's a whole bunch of movies filmed in Westchester. But almost none of them take place in Westchester. And the ones that do take place in Westchester are filmed somewhere else. Like X-Men. They filmed that, I think, in, in England somewhere. Even though the the X-Men mansion is in Westchester. And But this movie, they, they filmed it in Westchester. It takes place in Westchester. And it's just such a beautiful looking movie. As as a Westchester resident and, and you know, going to the set of the movie when they're filming it and and seeing the house and then seeing it in the movie it's crazy what they did they added a train behind the house there's no train behind the house there's a, a freaking golf course behind the house it's crazy it's it, but it's just the metro north seeing the metro north on the big screen fantastic it really i i loved it i loved the visuals i loved the movie i thought the movie was great never read the book but uh, I, I liked it. I liked the movie a lot. And I went into it, of course, because I didn't read the book. I didn't know how it ended. And so I I was surprised. I thought it was very good. I thought the ending was fantastic. And I really liked it. I, I really did like The Girl on the Train. Coming in at number four, Star Trek Beyond. Star Trek Beyond was a movie that... Uh, that first trailer really disappointed me that that first trailer led me to think that this movie was not going to be good they had beastie boys playing and they had a bunch of uh they had a, a bike and it just really didn't look like star trek it didn't feel like star trek it felt like they were going for something else and i did not like that trailer at all the second trailer i thought was very good but the damage had been done, and I wish that they never released that first trailer because this movie blew me away when it was over. And I love the J.J. Abrams Star Treks. I love Star Trek, the the older movies, and, and the, the TV show Voyager is my favorite show of Star Trek. And I thought this movie was definitely the best of the new trilogy that we have so far. I thought, I thought it was fantastic, even though I loved star trek 2009 and i loved star trek into darkness beyond was just amazing it really was the some of the action was a little bit too shaky and it and it definitely missed that jj abrams style to it i love jj abrams style i love it but this movie the villain was amazing the the whole chemistry with the cast was fantastic in this movie it was really great it was a very good movie i loved it loved star trek beyond Coming in at number three, The Nice Guys. The Nice Guys is a huge surprise, and I'm very angry that they also ruined the marketing for this movie. You know, Star Trek Beyond had a lot of trailers and, and a lot of posters and things. They weren't good. But the thing with The Nice Guys is that they barely had any trailers. I didn't see a trailer for the nice guys until the day before i saw it and it, the only reason i i saw it was because i was hearing all these great things about it i saw the reviews and i was just hearing that everybody was saying it was great and i, I love the cast and i think shane black is a great director and and a terrific writer so i decided to go see it and i only saw that trailer like when i decided to go see it the day before i saw it i, I went i looked up the trailer and i was like oh this looks interesting and the movie had been playing for i think about a week already and I, st I still had not seen 
um, a trailer for the movie. All I saw was like a poster on the side of a bus. And I saw Russell Crowe and Ryan Gosling. And I, I was like, oh, that looks interesting. I can't wait to see a trailer for that. But of all the movies that I've seen this year in theaters, none of them had the trailer for this movie. None of them. And, you know, I just thought that was so weird. And it's a shame that not a lot of people saw this movie. You know, it. it uh, I'm not sure if it made more than its budget. I think it it might have made uh, a little bit around its its budget. So it didn't wasn't a huge success. But I thought this movie was terrific. I thought it was not only funny, but the action itself was terrific. It was. Uh, I thought it was a very good old school movie and just extremely enjoyable the story was good the chemistry between the cast was great the direction was fantastic and i i like i really liked the nice guys i really liked it a lot very entertaining movie coming in at number two 10 cloverfield lane so when i went to see 13 hours and i saw the trailer for this thing i was shocked i was just i could not believe it i could not believe that a movie like this was being held in in such secrecy for so long while they were filming it and everything because i was such a huge fan of cloverfield the first one and i didn't know what to expect with this one i really i i, I thought maybe this whole thing was going on while the first movie but uh eventually it became clear that this is something else it's it's a an anthology series which i don't mind at all because this movie blew me away i really thought the acting was some incredible like from everybody john goodman killed this movie he was so good in this movie he was scary i thought this movie was so suspenseful i saw it twice in theaters and both times i the suspense still got to me which is very rare for a movie that has a lot of suspense usually you've seen it once and it's sort of like the suspense is over this the second time you see it but uh you, even the third time i saw it when it was out on blu-ray i thought it was still so suspenseful just the whole tension of it and and, and the the confined space that it takes place in was amazing and the ending i loved the ending i absolutely loved it i thought that it was an amazing ending i can't wait until the next cloverfield movie comes out i really i love the idea of the series and i i'd say that 10 cloverfield lane in my opinion is better than cloverfield even though i loved cloverfield 10 cloverfield lane was just something else that was an experience coming in at number one my number one favorite movie of 2016 rogue one honestly how can i say anything else i'm i'm such a huge star wars fan but um i gotta be honest none of the trailers for rogue one really made me excited other than now i'm excited that a new star wars movie is coming out and and it's got darth vader in it but none of the trailers really got me hyped like the way force awakens did well once i saw this movie i really was blown away by it i was so freaking amazed by it all i do wish darth vader was in the movie a little bit longer but his scene is seriously one of the best scenes in the entire star wars saga I think that the ending of this movie is my favorite ending to any Star Wars movie. Um, just everything about this movie I thought was great, except for the first 30 minutes. I'm not going to lie. I'm not a big fan of the first 30 minutes. I think it's very sloppy. Um, and it's not that fun. It's kind of boring, to be honest. Um, it's just something about the way that they edited the whole thing together going back and forth between characters it could have been done a little bit better and that whole scene which i know everybody else complains about but that whole scene with the mind reading uh squid alien i thought that should have just been cut uh because it it went nowhere i think that it was an interesting idea it would have been perfect if um that happened earlier in the movie where uh 
Bodhi, the pilot, gets... He gets... Uh, it doesn't even need to be a, a squid. It could be, like, anything else or, or even something smaller because it just looked really weird when he was getting wrapped with the, the tentacles. It just looked really weird. But um, it would have been a great thing if maybe they needed Bodhi for uh, the message. Like, maybe the message itself was not in hologram form maybe it was something that Bodhi had in his in his mind that he had to tell people so maybe in doing that uh that maybe his mind would have you know he would have lost his mind which that's what Saw Gerrera said um but instead of him just snapping out of it within a second after it happens basically like it would have been great if that would have continued on throughout the movie to at least maybe until later on where it starts to wear off but it would have been interesting if it was sort of like they had to get something the information from this guy and and Saw Gerrera had already done the, the thing and he lost his mind it would have been something like that it would have been very interesting and I think would have added a little bit more to the whole team aspect of it, it would have given us a little bit more more of uh it could have been a little bit more humor but just more lines in in as far as them all together but i thought this movie was great i really did um krennic terrific villain vader amazing james Earl jones came back to do the voice that yeah, I, I really want to see more darth vader i really do um tarkin did not bother me at all i really liked it i liked it a lot the cinematography in this movie was great i think that location wise i think this movie was a step up from force awakens uh, i think that the planets were a lot more beautiful looking than some of the force awakens planets you know like the whole star killer base was just a snow planet i'm not a big fan of snow um compared to scarif which is beautiful beaches and palm trees uh but i do wish they would have shot this movie on film like force awakens but either either way i still think this movie was fantastic i think it was fantastic some of the action was a little bit too fast i wish they would have slowed down with it a little bit and not cut so much to different angles which was a little bit of an issue i don't know uh, why they would do that i wish they kind of went the force awakens approach the jj abrams approach which was uh these really epic wide shots of stormtroopers getting hit and just f ragdolling like they would just fly back and they would just turn like a like a ragdoll and just i thought that was terrific about the the force awakens so i definitely loved Rogue One. I don't know if I like it more than Force Awakens because I really loved Force Awakens. I still love that movie. Um, you know, people complain about um, Force Awakens. People complain about Rogue One, but look, they're, they're Star Wars movies. These are these are just movies, okay? We have all been, for the most part, spoiled by the great video games and the TV shows and the fan fiction the books the comic books we've all been spoiled by all of that star wars stuff so that when they finally made a movie it just oh it didn't go our way this wasn't what we wanted the story to be this wasn't where we wanted to go listen it's it'll all make sense when the third movie of this new trilogy comes out i definitely uh i i loved force awakens i loved Rogue One. I have I have no complaints about either. I think Force Awakens was a great setup to the new trilogy, and I think that Rogue One was a terrific start to the uh, Star Wars anthology films, which uh, will be getting the Han Solo movie next. Which um, honestly, I'm excited for it because of the crew and the cast, the directors. You know, Phil Lord, Chris Miller, fantastic. Um. Yes, I did. I did love Rogue One. That is my favorite movie of 2016. I thought thought it was terrific. The special effects, terrific. Everything, terrific. Thought it was a great freaking movie. So anyway, thank you for watching. This has been my top 16 favorite movies of 2016, and uh, I'll see you all next time.